Well, hi. Today is the day that we will finally uh, finish all the little details on the shaper that were either missing or uh, that I want to improve. And uh, we're going to start on the automatic tool lift off on the return stroke because it has really become a necessity since uh, these side cut tools that I have are actually with a soldered on um, hard metal uh, plate. So this is not uh, high speed steel, but this is cemented carbide or um, tungsten carbide, something like that. Um, the issue with that is that it's very hard and thereby very brittle so that if I were to plane this side here on each return stroke when the tool would basically come along backwards, not cutting it would jam against the workpiece. With high speed steel that is not a problem. The tool is flexible enough to cope with that. But with tungsten carbide and similar metals, um, the problem is that it is so brittle that one return stroke and one jam is enough to break the cutting edge clear off. I have some footage here where I'm trying to plane some pieces down and um, actually I have to use my hand to manually lift the tool up each stroke. That can become annoying really quickly, so today we will address that problem by building the rubber piece which goes in between here to act as a friction cushion on the sliding rail so that on each stroke this shoe is sliding back and forth and thereby lifting the tool up. The simplest choice would have of course been buying the piece from the company Klopp who built this entire shaper. And they still have it on store, but um, they want 55 euros for it, which is way too much for a piece of rubber in my mind. So I asked around and I actually have a friend in the automotive business and he has got this, which is basically the raw material needed to make this part. It's just a block of rubber with the correct size to fit underneath here. The only thing that's left to do is drill the mounting holes and somehow make the radius on here to actually be able to swivel it back and forth without any deviation. simple problem now. This is square and when it's supposed to pivot, although it does so, of course it's only going to ride on this very edge. So what we have to do is round this edge off somewhat. I think we can do that on the lathe. The old faces, the ones that I miss so, tell them folks don't wait, I'll be out kind of late. bit of finishing work on the grinder so that you won't see all these ugly two marks. Uh, there is a slight curve but of course the problem with rubber is that it is flexible so as soon as the tool will contact it it will flex out the way. 
anyway, I think this is enough and uh, the rest will wear itself in. So I'm now going to mount it and see what it does. fine, at least it's not wrecking the tools anymore, and um, whatever imperfections there are on the rubber, it's going to wear in on the sliding rail. Um, it saved me a ton of money and actually made a little bit of fun as well. Um, so that part is finished. The next part we will address is a main switch on this shaper because it is actually constantly under power. So there is no way to get the transformer out of power and um, that's what we're going to address next. Thank you for watching.